Most kids, when they're little, threaten to run away. But only my father would actually make us run away from home and even help pack our bags. <laughs> Maybe it was growing up in North New Jersey. Maybe it was growing up in a Filipino household. Or maybe it was just my dad trying to prove he's never wrong. But he's always devising unique ways to show us that he means business, especially when it comes to food. In our family, food equals love. If my dad had his way, he would have named me, eat now, and my younger brother, come on, let's eat. <laughs> One afternoon, my mother had picked us up from elementary school. She just finished the night shift as a registered nurse, and in her zombie-like way said, do your homework, do not make noise, wake me up to make dinner. As soon as we hit that sliding back door, Kevin and I peeled away our school uniforms like snakes shedding their skins. Kevin, who was age seven, took off his Jansport book bag so big on his tiny back, it looked like he was, you know, smuggling in an immigrant family member. <laughs> and he never let us help, which made it look even more suspicious. I took off my school tie and my sweater that read St. Anthony of Padua School. Being the responsible older sister by three years, I took my molted skins and I hung it up in a closet. Unlike my brother, who left his in his tracks all around the house like a snake, Kevin was the sort of kid that reminded us of the family cartoon. At all times, he knew exactly where and what he did in the house because he shed his skin everywhere. We should have been doing homework, but instead, since we knew our mother was dead asleep and my father was toiling away at work, we did what any siblings would do. We made snacks from watching TV. And in our household, my father, he made sure that we had plenty of it. So with the snacks, my dad had set it aside, and you couldn't watch it. So for us, having a household full of snacks, you couldn't watch TV without a potato chip in hand and an M&M in mouth. Not only was my father a TV junkie, he was also a, a snack food junkie, he was also a TV junkie. We had one of those TVs in the late 80s that sat on the floor and had wood paneling. And despite having a TV in every single room of the house, <laughs> since my mother was sleeping, my brother and I had to be confined to one tiny space. And this was unacceptable, because putting my brother and I together was like dipping Twizzlers in tartar sauce. It just didn't work. My brother was the kind of kid that would stick tweezers in the outlet because he liked the way it made his hair stand up. <laughs> and we fought a lot, just the way it was. And since my brother was very adamant about breaking things, he broke the remote control. So before we could even watch TV and indulge in that before my father came home, I asked him, don't mess with this. At that point, my babysitting skills were as good as the books I've just been reading, the Babysitter's Club. So I let him alone. I had gone upstairs to fetch my notebook. That was my insurance. That way, my father and my mother were to come around, they knew I would be doing my homework. When I came back downstairs, I noticed that the floor wasn't littered with the snacks that we had prepared. It was littered with the remote control buttons. <laughs> I immediately yelled, get it, in the same way my Filipino mom would. And not because I was mocking her. It was because that's all I heard growing up. <laughs> get it, get it, get it. <laughs> so of course I did it that way. Get it, what are you doing? Put the remote control back. He looked at me with that mischievous smile that I grew to love and hate. Uh, <laughs> How can you watch TV now? Put it back together. He said, no. I got a little bit louder. Put it together. Uh, later, after I play Nintendo. Do it now. Nah, I'll do it later. As we got a little louder, and throughout all the screaming, my mother never even stirred. I couldn't take it anymore. Kevin was just looking for something to do. 
And since he was so obstinate, I had to say, Kevin, I'm going to tell Dad. That's when he looked at me dead in the eye and said, I hate you. You are the worst sister. You are so not fun. I wish I had a brother. Oh, shit, you wasted my TV time. <laughs> so I immediately replied, I hate you too. You always make a mess. I clean it up. They always blame me. I hate you as well. At that moment, we knew we were in trouble because we heard my dad's briefcase hit that sliding back door. We were screwed. <laughs> my dad was the kind of person to really be adamant. So he found us in the house and said, what's going on? Why are you guys saying you hate each other? And why are you screaming? Your mother's sleeping. We were shocked. Concerned about my mother, he left Kevin and I to suffer in limbo. And since I had my notebook, I was feigned studying because I wanted him to know I was doing my homework. <laughs> Which I wasn't. <laughs> when he came back down, he had something in his hands. He had two small lunch boxes and two small duffel bags filled with our clothing. He says, run away to a house that likes fighting kids. <laughs> and don't come back till you love each other. At this point, we thought he was joking, so we didn't move. Now! Oh, okay, he means business. So he gave us the bags, and we went through that sliding back door, the same sliding back door that gave us the promise of snacks and TV each afternoon. And since we had nowhere to take refuge, the only place we could go was the carport shed next to our house. And just like a boxing ring, Kevin and I sat at opposite corners. Before my dad shut the door, he looked at us and says, don't come back. Only brothers and sisters that love each other can live in my house. If you're hungry, figure it out. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I was starving. <laughs> About an hour had passed. Kevin and I still didn't say anything to each other. We were sort of opposite. Kevin brought, Kevin opened his lunchbox and he looked for food, thinking my father was gonna pack him a snack, okay? So he was defeated. So he ended up making a bed out of a tarp my father used for a barbecue a few months back. I sat there thinking, oh my God, I gotta take care of this kid. Who's gonna feed him? Who's gonna take us to school tomorrow? Who's gonna feed my dog? I had all these questions. Kevin looked like he was enjoying himself. It sucked. Another hour had passed. It probably was three, but in kid time it felt like black hole time. We still hadn't said anything to each other, but I heard his stomach growling. But it wasn't that he was hungry, it was because our parents had eaten without us. We always ate together, and we always ate at six. Being Filipino, all you did was eat. Seriously, that's all you do. So when Kevin said to me, maybe we should talk about it, I didn't want to. But then I looked at his face because he started to cry. And then he said humbly, I don't really hate you. You're annoying, but I don't hate you. What a sensitive kid. <laughs> I didn't reciprocate, at least not in the same way. So I went over to him, put my arm around him and said, cool. <laughs> but we sat, and it was probably more like midnight or kid time, 7.30. Uh, <laughs> my father had just opened the door. Wow, maybe he was coming to save us. My dog had come back out. My mom's cooking, sm the smell was everywhere. And then my father said, come on, let's eat. We were saved. Later we would learn that my parents had been peeking through the blinds the whole time just to make sure we're okay. My mother really wanted to come grab us because she knew we would be scared and concerned and just all over the place. But my dad said, wait, just wait, they're gonna figure it out. Kevin and I don't always see eye to eye. He being the more sensitive, I being the more direct, I the more outgoing. But after that day, we didn't necessarily stop fighting. We just found a new way to connect. So when we see each other now, the first thing we do is smile and laugh at each other and say, do you have any snacks? 
So an empty stomach is an empty heart. We never die hungry again. Thank you.